Well, Beverly and I were in Arco, and uh, I have to say, the marina itself is absolutely tiny. Tiny, but it's also got loads and loads of much bigger boats than you'd expect. It's jam-packed in there, it really is. It really is jam-packed. Um, but there is a visitor pontoon and that is excellent. Yeah, it's good. Um, although the step up. Bit of a step up for you. Certainly is. Oh, <laughs> managed it though. Can get a wee bit big. Because <laughs> It's fixed, isn't it? It's a fixed height, yeah. so uh, a wee bit of a step up there. But other than that, it was great, wasn't it, Bev? It was. We enjoyed it immensely, and the Harbour Master's a great guy. He certainly is. We had a lot of recommendations about him, and they all turned out to be true. <laughs> Always better. Uh -huh. um, but uh, at the moment, we're just uh, passing a fish farm. But the thing is, although I updated uh, the charts at Don Leary, um, there was absolutely no mention of this fish farm whatsoever and um, it is quite a good size to be honest. We saw it from a couple of miles away, we saw it when we came out of Arkla. We did, um, but um, I'm glad we were advised uh, to go out during, you know, basically don't bother trying to do a night passage unless you're way out. Um, because there's so many pots and stuff. Yeah. Now I know a fish farm's a bit extreme on the pots, but there certainly is lots of pots. Yeah. So weather-wise, we're under engine again because there is no wind. No wind. So we're not going to do another plan versus reality until we get <laughs> a sailing plan on the, versus on the, reality. On the plus side, if we have to anchor out anywhere, this should be anchorable in these conditions. Oh gosh, yes. I mean, even, even though the coast behind us will be a lee shore. It will, but realistically, when you've got two or three knots of wind, everywhere is anchorable. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it's hardly any wind, we've got two reefs in. Exactly, we can't put any more sail than that out because um, the wind is so light um, that, you, that it can't hold the weight of fabric. So uh, that's why we've got the two reefs in, but it's out. Our light, we, we didn't get our light wind sail ready in time for this year, so we've got the heavy weather sail out and um, yeah, it's a heavy fabric. And it is suffering. I mean, the wind's barely holding it up. <laughs> it really is, just barely. Yeah, lots of wind and it's barely holding that sail up. And that's on two reefs. But the thing <laughs> is, it's still out and I'm happy. Oh, dudes. Well, this bit of uh, coast has got quite a lot of um, banks. Um, and obviously you can't see them um, because, let's be honest, the sea looks flat. Oh, for goodness sake, Bev! Well, oh, all right. It's a big chart. Got to do something with it. Hang on. Let me, let me do a bit of origami. There we go. All right. There. My right, children, today we're going to learn about. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're about here at a place called uh, Ronnie Point. R sorry, no, where is it? There, it's here. We have two ways to get down the coast from here. There's these large banks, and we can either go around the outside or we can come down the inside. And we've looked at the inside passage, and they're all marked as buoyed. There's buoyed channels all the way down. The depth doesn't appear to be any less than 12 metres anywhere in these buoyed channels. Um, it's a straighter route as well. If we sort of go out here, then we've got to come back in again. And that's extra mileage. Uh, if we go down here, uh, the anchorage we're looking at is right here on the corner. But if we arrive early enough on this anchorage, we can actually go round the corner and get the trip done today. Um, but 
it all depends on wind, it depends on tide, there's so many variables. It's uh, very, very difficult to be quite honest. And uh, I think the decision is that we're going to be going that way because when Gaynor filled out these extra marks on this chart, it was the outside of the banks that was silting up. No, there was no changes made to the inside of the banks when she, when she looked at this. So hopefully that means that these, these depths and things are still correct on the inside. and um, it's still sort of like oh are we gonna make it are we gonna be all right etc kind of situation because um, at 4 30 the tide goes against us and we are at 3 30 uh, so theoretically we should make everything fine but the tide is starting to uh, slacken at the top of uh, the point, which is only five nautical miles away, we were doing 6.2 knots, whereas now we're down to 4.9. Um, for serious reasons, one, the, the uh, sail had to go away, but also, as you get down to the point, the tide mitigates. Um, so, but we do have a backup. As always, you should always have a backup, and our backup was two little anchorages um, called what were they called, Beth? St Margaret's Bay and Bally Trent Bay. Yeah, St Margaret's Bay and Bally Trent Bay, and um, uh, you know we we've we've at least scoped them out um, while we went past. Uh, but I reckon I can still make it. Uh, so it's just slog on. Okay, Gainer. Why are we rocking shades? Hey! I've got the aviator look, Gainer's got the mod look. It's only because uh, the sea sparkle is uh, quite intense and I can just about see the buoys that I'm interested in. Um, we're coming up to um, uh, a bridge, which isn't really a bridge, it's a sandbar. And uh, we've got to go through the buoy markers. Now on the chart it looks really scary. Yeah, it looks like you're going to scrape the paint off, doesn't it? It does, but uh, it's one of those things. In I reality I could land an aircraft between the darn things. Yeah, we still need to work out scale a little bit better. Yeah, we We're do. We're not great on scale. Yeah. Um, There's nothing no. right here to measure it by. No, I know, but even when we're looking at the charts, you know, how far these are, but one thing for certain, it's nowhere near as bad as I thought. Reality's so. never quite as scary as the chart. No. But the only difference where is, um, I would say, is on the cows of you. They are <laughs> skinny. They are skinny, yeah. <laughs> they are there. Right, well, let's get ourselves sorted for this, and then after that, let's find the leading line and get into Kilmore. Yeah. Uh, we're just about going to get in on this side of sunset. Yippee. Do you know? <laughs> Well, we're just going up to St. Patrick's Bridge and I have to say the sea state changes dramatically from one side of the, of the sandbar to the other. But I've got manual control. Gosh, it's like 11 metres of depth. Yeah, because at the moment I'm in 11 metres, but I'm going to be going through 2 metres of depth. Um, just coming up.
After passing St Patrick's Bridge, we turned onto the leading line that would guide us into Kilmore Quay. Kilmore Quay. It is um, a quaint little harbour with lots and lots of fishing boats. Um, I personally love um, the Christmas tree um, and the fact that there is a chippy just at the top of the ramp. The uh, toilets at uh, Kilmore Quay uh, have got a bad reputation in the pilot guide. But realistically, they are at least serviceable and clean, or at least the ladies are. But I quite like the um, raw time that they've done, uh, just at the top of the doors. The pilot guide for the toilets here at Kilmore Quay was quite scathing, to be honest. Um, but I think um, the toilets here are absolutely wonderful. And the uh, shower room is quite frankly palatial. If you do take a walk around Kilmore Quay, there's absolutely loads of thatched cottages, which is something, to be honest, I wasn't really expecting, but it was a nice surprise. Behind me are the, is the, are the leading lines or the leading marks that I was uh, using to come into Kilmore. And um, I had to do a fair amount of ferry gliding um, because the current was uh, running quite strongly when I was coming in. Um, but uh, I was concentrating so much on the leading lines that I was looking at these boys and I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to ram through them. But realistically, they are actually marking the end of the channel because you have to turn at right angles. So they're there just to stop you going any further. Mm -hmm. 